linear probability model and logic model. So in case of linear probability model, uh, what we do, we find out, you know, uh, different uh, borrowers, uh, different borrowers with whom we have our experience. Hmm. Like we uh, try to, uh, for example, we can think about uh, different types or different classes of borrowers or different classes of parties who take financing from us. Uh, let's say um, uh, they are identified as I, I type, okay? Uh, I type is a particular type of borrower. Okay, so, uh, so what we do, we try to uh, use the past data of important characteristic variables um, as input for a particular type of old customer into the model to explain repayment experience. Uh, so repayment experience means whether the whether the customer has default or not. You know whether the customer has default or not. This is why uh, the notation is D here. So DI represents the uh, uh, past default behavior of I type of customer, okay? Uh, for example, uh, let's say one type of customer is agricultural uh, loan customer uh, of rural area. So if this is the class I, uh, now we will see, uh, okay, in the past, uh, did they default? Okay, For, uh, let us think about one particular customer. Uh, did that particular customer default or not? If the customer has uh, has default, then we provide a value D equals to one. And if it did not default at all, then we provide the value D equals to zero. Okay, so this is for one uh, particular type of customer. Then we look into uh, some important characteristics that might be, uh, you know, able to explain the default behavior of the customer. For example, the uh, existing leverage of the customer, for example, profit margin of the customer, for example, liquidity status of the customer, okay? Uh, these are uh, operating profit of the customer, <laughs> the activity uh, efficiency, you know, turnover uh, of the customer a different type of variables. So if we think that a particular one, two, three, or four types of variables are very important, okay, then we identify those. Uh, let's say the number is uh, five, five variables, then J will be equal to five. So J number of important characteristic variables will be, will be used as input, okay, uh, as input. And we will try to use that input as uh, uh, that inputs uh, that inputs as the explanatory uh, variables of the default behavior of those customers. Okay, we'll give an example, and it, it will be quite clear. So, uh, as you have understood, probably you have already understood that we will divide. You know, this is another way of explaining this. So, what we will do, we will divide the old loans or old financings into two observational groups. One is those that defaulted, and another one is that did not default. So if there was a default, then we uh, we give a value D is equals to one. That means it default. And if it did not default, then we provide the value D is equals to zero. And for each and every of them, we collect the variable X1, X2, X3, etc. And then what we do, we try to apply statistical technique called linear regression uh, to estimate the estimate the coefficient uh, of each and every x's that means what is the coefficient of x what is the coefficient of x2 uh, uh, what is the coefficient of x3 and so on okay and this is the process by which we can actually identify the important characteristic factors and their relationship with the default behavior for example, if x1 has a beta value, that means the coefficient of 0.5, that means if x1 increases by 1, then the pro default pro uh, value will increase, default score you know, will increase by uh, 0.5. Okay? Uh, similar, uh, uh, and in similar manner, we do that for x2, x3, and so on. So you can understand that we will actually come up with an uh, with an e equation like this, where default behavior is the 
uh, dependent variable. That means it depends on different characteristic. Uh, so what are the characteristics? The characteristics are x1, x2, x3, and so on. Okay, and how each and every characteristic is important in explaining D, that is beta. So if the uh, beta value is higher, that means x1 is more important. If the beta value is lower, that means x uh, is uh, less important. If the beta value is positive, that means if x increases, default will also increase. If x decreases, default will also decrease. On the other hand, if the beta value is negative, that means if x increase, default will decrease. If x decrease, default will increase and so on. Okay. So uh, normally when we see this kind of equation, it seems uh, quite um, uh, difficult uh, sometimes. But if we practically do it, it will be very easy actually. Hmm. So, um, uh, okay. Let's say we have already done it. Uh, let's say we have already found the beta values. Okay. Let's say we have already found the beta values and we have already come up with the model. Now, what do we do? Now, we think about a new financing customer and collect the characteristic, uh, characteristic values, uh, value of the characteristic variables, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, you know, whatever. We can have uh, several numbers of uh, excess. So we collect the uh, let's say we have a new agricultural financing customer. And what we have got so far, we have already got the values of beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and so on for our old agricultural financing customers. Now, another agricultural financing customer has arrived to take the financing. And we understand that this is of the same type of, uh, you know, uh, uh, like the previous customer for which we have done the analysis. And we already know the beta 1, beta 2, beta 3, and so on. Okay, now what we will do, we will collect the uh, value of x1, x2, x3, and so on for the new customer. And then multiply x1 with beta1, x2 with beta2, x3 with uh, beta3, and so on. And we will get the value of D. And that will be the score representing the possibility of default. Okay, this is what we are going to say. So what we will do, we have already got the estimated beta. <coughs> Sorry, we have already got the estimated values of beta. That means beta one, beta three, beta, beta three, and so on. So what we will do, we will collect the observed x value, x one, x two, x three, for the prospective customer. Okay, then we will multiply beta one with x one, beta two with uh, x two, beta three with uh, x three, and so on. Okay, and then we will derive the derive a particular score uh, uh, that will represent the probability of default of the prospective financing customer. Okay, uh, so that will be the way uh, we will use. Okay, so uh, as I have told you, after we get the value of uh, uh, D uh, or PD, after we have got the value of D, uh, uh, that might not represent the exact probability of default. That is the limitation of uh, the linear probability model because sometimes uh, you will get the value of uh, uh, value of expected probability default that is beyond 100%. That means more than one or less than zero, uh, which is not actually practically explainable. So what do we need to do? We need to do a transformation uh, that is called logic model. Um, that I have already shown you in the Excel file using uh, <clears throat> using this formula. So um, uh, you can also do it on pen and paper. Um, so in that case, the value of E, that is a mathematical constant, and E is equals to 2.71828. Okay. So it will be 1 over 1 plus 2.71828 to the power minus the value that you have got from the linear probability model. So that will provide you the probability of default.